Welcome to the Swike Podcast, the only podcast that shares the stuff you didn't know you needed to know about jobs, careers, and life. The Swike Podcast, the stuff I wish I knew earlier. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier podcast. We're here with uh, Alex Florio, who's uh, one of the co-founders of Swab. And, uh, well, he'll get into a little bit more about what he's doing now, and then we'll get into his backstory. So he comes to us uh, with a bit of an entrepreneurial background in uh, help- helping others uh, f- find jobs and things like that. But uh, we'd love to hear a little bit more of his journey and swike along the way. So, Alex, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about what you're doing now? Yeah, for sure. So uh, in 2017, both my sister and I started Swab. Um, it was one of those things where for us, I think we both always wanted to branch off and be entrepreneurs and do our own thing. Uh, but when we started it, we didn't know what we wanted to do. Uh, but flash forward now, and here we are. Uh, but what we're doing now, so essentially what Swab is, it's a job app or recruiting platform that we've developed to help younger job seekers and students find work and help employers that are looking for these types of candidates. Um, so when we, when we first had the idea, we thought, how can we make ourselves unique and what can we do to stand out from all of the other competitors that were already out there? And one of the things that we found that was pretty surprising to us was there was nothing available to students. So we spoke prior to launching, we spoke to over 5,000 students to really learn and understand the process that they go through when looking for jobs. And we were blown away to learn that the number one way on how these students were looking for jobs was old school. They were doing what I was doing in high school, looking for jobs. They were going around in the malls, printing out stacks of resumes, handing them out one by one, not knowing who was hiring. And when we heard that, we thought, well, how can that be? How has everything, how has so many things changed yet this process has stayed the same? And uh, that's when we thought, you know, we want to build this out for students and make it really user-friendly and something that is relevant and something that this, this, I guess, generation of job seekers would understand. And so to even go back a little bit uh, further, um, so my background is in marketing. Uh, prior to starting Swab, I was uh, working in marketing in the industry. And when I first started, I loved it. It was, uh, I was working for an agency in Toronto and it was everything I, I had envisioned um, but fast forward a little while and I, um, I was just miserable in my role. I wasn't enjoying going into work every day. And uh, it was one of those things where I was just looking for a change. And I remember applying to jobs and, and going on and visiting other job boards and thinking, you know, there needs to be an easier way to do this. It was so frustrating. And uh, I can admit at the time I was on the dating app Tinder. <laughs> and I remember thinking, you know, what if there was sort of like a, a Tinder for jobs? And um, I remember I, I came home that night, I spoke to my sister about the idea. And it was one of those things where, you know, we both never looked back, we just we knew we had something there. And it's funny, you know, I always joke around, but if you had told me five years ago that I would eventually start a business with my sister, I, I would call you insane. And yet, <laughs> you know, here we are, we haven't killed one another yet. So uh, uh, you know, we always joke around about that. But it, it, it was quite a journey. And it's one of those things where Along the way, there's so many different things that we've learned and so many things that, um, you know, uh, that I wish I had known back then that I know now, uh, but I, it's, been one of, it's been a wild ride and it's been a crazy journey. And, you know, working with a sibling has uh, a lot of pros. I think a lot of people think that working with a sibling would be uh, a nightmare and, and believe me, at times it can be. Um, but it's one of those things where we're both very honest with one another. And if, if you know, one has an idea that we don't necessarily agree with, uh, there's no beating around the bush there. So it's, uh, right. it's very open. And it's one of those things where at the end of the day, we both have the same goal in mind. And that's to continue to help support employers who are hiring and support those job seekers that are looking. That's amazing. And, and I'd love to kind of go even further back, if you're open to it, to talk a little bit about like Alex as a kid. So, so growing up, were you always interested in, in marketing with, with how, how did like the entrepreneurial and the tech influences, but like, uh, and, and like, did, did, did you and your sister play together <laughs> as kids and then stuff like that? So talk us a little bit about that and, and then maybe some of the, the influence that you had a, along the way. Yeah. So Alex as a kid was, uh, you know, I, I think the saying boys will be boys really <laughs> apply to me. Uh, I, I was a regular, a regular kid. I, I liked to play outside. I liked to hang out with my friends. 
um, you know, school and homework was more often than not the last thing on my mind. Um, and both my sister and I, we, so she's two years older than I am. So we grew up very close together and, uh, you know, still obviously very close now, even though sometimes we have our, our battles, but um, mm -hmm. it was one of those, you know, as a kid, I, I think, um, like I said, I, boys will be boys. There was so many things and I was kind of sort of all over the place. And I always had so many different things that I was interested in. Um, but for me, my biggest passion when I was a kid and still my biggest passion is sports. Okay. Uh, I'm, I love sports. It's always been my escape and my passion. And, you know, when I was younger, I always thought that, you know, I was always interested in marketing and that sort of side of business. And I always thought if I can combine my passion of sports with my interest in marketing, that it would be a really cool career path for me. And so again, you know, when I started working, I was working at an agency that, um, that dealt with a lot of clients in the sporting space and right. it was just kind of a perfect marriage. Um, but, you know, in terms of like HR and tech and things like that, you know, it, it's not like, I'm certainly not a tech guy. Um, that whole side of the business is you might as well be speaking a, another language to me. Um, it's one of those things where I, I never thought this would be a space that I would enter. Uh, but yet, you know, here we are. And, and I think it was, you know, it, it's funny that what was a frustration of mine when I was looking for different opportunities ended up becoming what I'm doing now. Um, so it was something where, you know, I, I noticed a problem. I was frustrated by it. I, and I experienced it myself and I wanted to be the one to change it. And, you know, same thing for my sister. She also has a marketing background. Uh, she was also working in the industry and, you know, even for her, she always wanted to do her own thing. And, you know, like I said earlier, if you had told me that I'd eventually start a business with my sister five years ago, I'd call you crazy. Well, I, I can guarantee you, she would say the exact same thing. Um, but I, and, you know, I, I think it's one of those things where, you know, it, this sort of fell into our lap. There was an idea that we had and we thought, let's pursue this. And, you know, in the early stages of it, it especially, you know, both my sister and I not being tech people, it was kind of difficult to navigate. You know, we didn't know how to start, what we should do first. Um, you know, there was so many different things that we debated. Um, but it, it was one of those things where, you know, we, were, we both kind of buckled down did the research, did what we had to do to sort of help us initially get off the ground. And, um, you know, here we are. It's, it's one of those things where we never thought we would have built a tech platform or an HR platform, but, um, you know, it, we were, we, we were, uh, we did everything we could to make sure that, um, you know, although we're not tech people, that we found the best people to help support us and make our vision come to life. That's amazing. So I'd love to walk a little bit through, again, some of that journey to marketing. So it seems like that both you and your sister were became marketers. <laughs> so there must have been some sort of influence in, in that regard. Is there something in, in the household, in the water <laughs> that the family had? Uh, was, was mom and dad in, in that space as well? Um, or, or, or how did that influence come about? So yeah, my, my parents uh, are not in marketing. Um, okay. my father, yeah, it's funny. And I, my father's an accountant and uh, my mother worked for Bell Canada for her whole career so no marketing background there. okay uh, but it, it was really one of those things where it was just I think you know funny enough and I don't know if it's a coincidence or not but we just both had similar interests in this side of business um, but you know with our with, with our parents it was you know from an early age they always wanted us to follow our dreams do what makes us happy and whatever, th whatever decisions we wanted to do or whatever we wanted to do with our careers, um, they would support it. And so especially in the early stages where, you know, it's, it was scary to leave a job that you've worked so hard to get that's paying you and, you know, things are going well to leave that all behind to start a business where you're not going to get paid knowing that you're probably not going to see a paycheck for a long time. And, um, you know, you're going to be working like crazy and, you know, for a long time, you're not going to see really any results or any value from that. Um, so it was, it was very tough in the beginning and it, it was, um, you know, it was, it was, it put our minds at ease knowing that our parents were there to support us and, uh, you know, help kind of reassure that what we were doing. And, and, you know, we, we spoke a lot about, you know, we're leaving a job that's paying us, but. I don't want to look back in five or 10 years from now and think what could have been. And it was, you know, we both agreed, my sister and I, that 
you know, we would rather start this fail and have it blow up in our face than not have done it. And then look back 10 years from now and see somebody else had done it and killed it. And uh, we didn't take that chance. So, you know, even now, especially with, with young entrepreneurs and students, um, you know, it's nice to see that entrepreneurship is pushed in school and we always encourage, you know, whenever we meet with students or anybody for that matter, if you have an idea, go for it because you don't want to look back and think like you know, what could have been. Uh, and, and so for us, like that was certainly the biggest thing that was in the back of our minds is that yes, yes, this is a, a big risk on our part, but I'd rather take the chance than not take it at all. It sounds awesome. So I, I love to kind of walk through the journey. So uh, growing up, you were interested in marketing, um, and and when you took your uh, degree in um, in university, I think you did like sociology or something like that. Did, did you know at that point that you wanted marketing, or or were, was there a journey to get to marketing from from there? So there was a bit of a journey there. Um, so, you know, when I was in high school, I again sports was still always my passion, and marketing was always something that I was interested in. But for a long time. I thought my career path was going to be teaching. I thought I was okay. you know, become a teacher. It was something that, you know, I had some great teachers in high school that, uh, that had inspired me and, and, you know, kind of made me think this could be something that I, I would enjoy. And so when I, when I graduated from York, I had to make a decision. Do I want to pursue teacher's college or do I want to go and pursue marketing? And it was honestly, it was a tough decision because like I, I always envisioned myself, especially a lot throughout high school and university, I always, I always envisioned that I would be a teacher. Mm-hmm. And so to kind of start not doubting myself, but just thinking of other opportunities, it was, uh, there was a lot of sleepless lights. And, um, you know, when I look back, I have no regrets and I'm you know, thrilled with, with the path that I've chosen. Uh, but it was a uh, it was a long time where I thought I was going to get into teaching and and do that and you know it's still something that uh, you know I, I you know later on in life if that opportunity ever came up where I can kind of you know help and give back in some sort of way like that would be something that I would totally be interested in doing because it you know I, like I said I had great people and great teachers that helped inspire me um, but yeah that that's uh, you know, at York I had to make that decision what, do I want to go to the teachers college or what do I want to do and. And like I said, sports was always my passion and I always had the interest in marketing and that's when I knew this is what I want to do. I'd love for you to kind of walk us through that decision because I think that's an important one where a, a lot of folks in, in, in the audience are ones that are kind of university bound. Sometimes they're doing it just because mom and dad want them to, right? <laughs> they're, they're supposed to become like that doctor, lawyer, accountant, engineer, whatever, and they're down that path or maybe a different path, but um, university is kind of that, that ticket out. Um, and then for, for you, you, you kind of identified, you know, what, I want to be a teacher. You had kind of a clear path there. Um, so to be able to kind of pivot and say, you know what, not teacher, it's marketing in the sports area. So what uh, kind of flipped that decision or what was kind of the process you, you had in order to make the decision? And then uh, like after the decision was made, was it just kind of like uh, didn't look back or was there like doubts that creeped up along the way? Because I know some people are at that kind of um, uh, the fork in the road <laughs> and they're looking to make decisions. So help them do that. And then, um, yeah, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Well, I, like I said, I, I always knew that uh, like there was an entrepreneurial kind of bug in me. And one of the things that I always thought about was if I go to teacher's college, then that, you know, would, it would pretty much be the end of, you know, ever going off and doing something on my own. And, you know, again, like I, I thought teaching would be such a great career for me. And, you know, it's something like I enjoy speaking to, to people. And so I always thought I would do really well as a teacher, but uh, yeah, it was, again, you know, it was just so many different factors where, you know, again, sports being my passion, my, that combined with the interest in marketing and that combined with, you know, I eventually want to one day do my own thing and be my own boss. Uh, I just thought that if I was, if I decided to pursue teacher's college, then, you know, that entrepreneurial sort of dream that I had of eventually starting would probably never really ever be, you know, would never come to fruition. So uh, there was some nights where I thought, you know, did I make the right decision? And there's certainly some nights where there was doubt. Um, but I mean, looking back on that now, um, you know, I am, I'm, I'm happy with the decision that I made, but I mean, it, it was one of those things where uh, for a long time, you know, you kind of wondered, was this the right call? 
Right. So, you know, it, you know it, it's it's something that I think we all experience. Um, and you know, especially graduating from university, it's just you know it, that experience went by so fast. Where it's like I remember my very first day of university, thinking, okay, like. I got a lot of time before I have to worry about you know, next steps <laughs> and the next phase of my life. Um, and then, you know, before you know it, in a blink of an eye, the experience was over and it was like, oh my goodness, like I need to now really decide what I want to do with my life. And it's, it's tough at that age when, you know, you have to, you're, you're faced with that decision. Um, and, you know, there's so many other influences around you kind of trying to guide you here or guide you there. And, uh, it was one of those things where, like, I, I just had to listen to myself, go with my gut, and, you know, ultimately, uh, what, what the biggest factor was, was what would make me the happiest. Right. So it sounds like that uh, it, it was kind of a, uh, thinking about the two options, so teacher's college or not, and, and you felt that uh, teacher's college would be a little bit more limiting because you had that interest in, in sports and in marketing, in entrepreneurship and all that sort of stuff. And if you're a full-time teacher, <laughs> that's probably less in the, in the cards for doing that. So the, the decision is more keep your options open is, is, is one of those things um, and not limit yourself. Um, and can, can you, or do you have a time when you had already made that uh, marketing decision and uh, thought back, uh, as, as you mentioned, like, is this the right decision? Like, how did you overcome that? Or I don't know, did you overcome it? Or did you just kind of let it go? Or can you describe one of those moments? I think, well, I think when I made the decision to, to pursue marketing and, and do all of that, uh, it was, you know, similar to like, when we started Swab, it was just one of those where I never really looked back on it. Okay. Um, but I mean, I, I was, you know, when I started working in marketing in the industry, working for an agency in, in Toronto. Um, like I said earlier, it was one of those where, where when I started, it was kind of everything I had envisioned. It was everything that I had hoped for. And then fast forward a little while. And, and like I said, I was just miserable. So I remember having those days where I'd go into work, just being absolutely depressed, being miserable, just not wanting to be there. And that's when I would think, you know, was, was this the right decision uh, and it sort of would creep up in the back of my mind. And I don't know if that's because I had a, a commute that was over an hour with two different trains where I was right. exhausted physically and mentally and, and not looking forward to that part of things. Um, but in the back of my mind, I did also always tell myself that this wasn't the long goal or the long-term goal. And this wasn't sort of where I'm going to be uh, in five or 10 years from now. Uh, so that's sort of what I, I hung on to was knowing that I am eventually going to do something on my own. It's, it, this is the reason why I chose this path. And it was just a matter of what I'm going to do. That's awesome. So it sounds like that uh, while making the marketing decision, it wasn't really that kind of regret. It was more like, now I actually made it <laughs> and I'm doing the stuff that I love. It's like, oh man, but this wasn't uh, wh what I thought it would be. So can, can you walk us through kind of the, the time period when uh, you, you got that job marketing, this, this is awesome, this is exactly what I wanted, it's going according to plan. And then kind of that, uh, I guess the gradual decline, because a lot of folks uh, suffer on that like death by a thousand cuts where it's not, not it, it was great and, and, and awesome, but then slowly and slowly and slowly kind of um, recede. So, and then what was kind of the, the tipping point for you to do, to do something different um but uh, yeah walk us through, through 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 that journey if you don't mind yeah so uh you know it's funny when when i graduated from college uh where where i went after york um i was one of those people that spent so much time trying to get my name out there i spent you know so much time networking doing informational interviews and you know i i would often joke around with a lot of my classmates saying, you know, looking for a job is a full-time job. So I sure. literally like Monday to Friday, nine to five, I'd be on the phone, sending out countless numbers of emails, trying to set up interviews and different things like that. And so for me, um, that experience doing all of that was beneficial because, you know, when I got hired, it was sort of a fluke. Um, there was somebody, I, I remember I had gone for an interview and, uh, you know, for whatever reason, it didn't really pan out. Uh, and so they knew who I was, though. And, it, you know, it wasn't because I did a bad interview or anything like that. I just they decided to, to pick another candidate, which was, you know, that's fine. That was their decision. Um, but it had worked out because all of that networking sort of made them know who I am. And then they, my name was in the back of their heads. And, and you know, it was funny enough, this person that they hired didn't work out. And they had reached out to me saying, hey, we... Uh, 
you know, we have an opening. We want to bring you in for an interview. Are you interested? And said, yeah, for sure. And so I went in, got interviewed, got hired. I was ecstatic. And, um, you know, so I would say this was all probably in terms of a timeline, um, you know, probably late summer of 2016. Uh, so, you know, I, I started there, I was working and then I would say it started to kind of go the other direction, um, well, probably around late winter. So I guess late February or early fall of 2017. Um, and that's really when I started, you know, work wasn't fun for me anymore. And that's when I started looking for other opportunities. And again, it was one of those things where just through that frustration of looking for other opportunities, um, it led to what I'm doing today. So in a way, I'm, I'm grateful that I had that experience because I, if I didn't have that experience where I went into work every day feeling miserable, um, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. Uh, so looking back on it, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I'm grateful for that experience and I'm, I'm glad that it happened. And you know, part of me wants to go back there and, and thank some of the people that I used to work with who, I, um, you know, who, who didn't make it too much fun. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it, it was, you know, once, once the, once the idea was there, you know, and it's funny, I, I remember being, um, I, I remember just sitting there having this idea, Tinder for jobs. And I, I had a little sticky note next to me. And I just remember writing that down Tinder for jobs on a little sticky note, which I actually have, um, you know, with me uh, at my desk. And, you know, it's something that you know, it, it was like, looking back on that, I, you know, I never knew that, you know, what that little idea was at the time that it would evolve into this. Um, but yeah, it, it was, you know, I, I'm, like I said, I was grateful for that experience. And, um, you know, I, I, I always encourage and I, I, you know, I hope that other people who are like myself, who, you know, had ideas or had other aspirations, um, that they do sort of follow their path. Because like I said, you know, it's, I, I the, the biggest risk is not taking one. And, I didn't want to look back and be miserable. So I, I remember, you know, when, when, uh, when we left our roles, which was probably around April of 2017, you know, that's when, you know, we both knew my sister and I, like, this is what we're going to do full time. Um, you know, we're, we're thankful that we have the support of our parents that are there to help us out. Let's, you know, bootstrap this, build something, the two of us and, you know, see where it goes and learn along the way. That's awesome. So uh, it sounds like uh, that that quote, like turn uh, lemons into lemonade type of thing. <laughs> you took some of that frustration to the point where you're almost thanking the, the folks that were there. It's like, I'm so glad you made me miserable because it led me to, to, to where I am now. But uh, so if, if we go from the, the, the sticky note, the idea, you have the, the Tinder for jobs there, and then the kind of decision to uh, kind of leave it all for, for, for this kind of crazy idea, right? So what is like uh, the conversation with, with parents or the folks closest to you uh, seem like? So obviously you and your sister are kind of tag teaming and saying, okay, yeah, this is a good idea. Um, and, and, but then everybody else must have been like, oh, you're out of your mind because this is uh, not safe. There, there's so much risk and all that sort of stuff. What, what sort of like um, obstacles or, or uh, challenges do you have on that front? Or was it pretty, pretty easy to convince folks? Because you're both marketers, so you guys are awesome at that. <laughs> I, I, I remember speaking to my parents and, you know, me being who I am, jokingly said, I have this million dollar idea. And, and my parents think, okay, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, when I, when I explained the idea and what I was thinking and sort of what I envisioned, uh, it was one of those where they were like, okay, this is actually kind of interesting. Um, you know, this, uh, it's not a dumb idea that we get expected from you. It's something where <laughs> this actually could be something. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're grateful that they were super supportive early on. Uh, but one thing they, they, they did make sure was that, you know, know the risks, um, know that, you know, there's a lot of sacrifice that's going to have to be made and a lot of sacrifice that you're going to have to put into doing, you know, your own thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for them, you know, I think they both knew that we, my sister and I always wanted to do our own thing. And I don't think they ever thought that we would do our own thing together. Wow. Um, so I, I think that that was something that really, um, I, I think it made them happy. And I think it was something they were proud of at the fact that, you know, here's my sister and I who came together and, and wanted to do this together. So, 
Um, they were very supportive of that. They still are very supportive. And, you know, especially in the early days when, when there are doubts and, and, you know, there are times that, uh, you know, you can get low on yourself. Um, they were there to say like, you know, no, like, you know, get back on the horse, make sure you're doing your thing, make sure you don't get too high when things are good. Don't get too low when things are bad. Um, and, you know, just keep doing what you're doing because if you believe in what you're doing and you're passionate about it, you'll eventually get to that point where you want to be. So, uh, I, yeah, I think for them knowing that my sister and I wanted to do this together and that, you know, also wrapped around with the actual idea itself, I think they felt comfortable knowing that this is something if they want to pursue it, then do it. And, you know, I think very similar to how we thought it was, you know, they thought if, if it blows up and fails and doesn't go anywhere, at least you took the chance. Sure. And, you know, one thing even, um, you know, I thought about uh, as well, like, you know, when, when, when we started this and thought, you know, this, there's a, ch a chance that this doesn't work. And, you know, I thought, okay, like this could look good on my resume seeing, you know, putting down here, like, you know, I started this business, I done X, Y, Z. Um, so I was always something I thought of too, that, you know, it's funny. I, I, I always joked around with some friends of mine that I'm probably more employable now than I've mm. ever been because, you know, there's like every aspect of this business. It's like, I'm involved in it some way or another. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, we were just so grateful to have the support that we had and still are grateful for the support. That's amazing. So, so walk us through some of the, the early days. So you have the ideas. Now your parents give you kind of their blessing, so to speak. Um, but neither of you are in tech, but you build a, a platform. So what is that journey like? So do you, do you move into your, your parents' garage <laughs> type of thing and, and go through that? Or like, how do you uh, pay, pay for coding and development? Because you didn't do it yourself, right? So what is that process? Because I, I know there are a lot of folks out there with ideas and, and they want to do it if, if only I can get uh, like found a tech find a tech co-founder to build it for me is, is that the route or is there a different way of, of doing things or at least from your experience so when uh, when we first started you know we're you know set up a little office space in mom and dad's basement <laughs> uh, and that's where we worked for a long time and you know it's funny like we moved all over my parents house whether it was in the dining room the kitchen the basement wherever it's like we almost just kind of took over um, but again, you know, not having a tech background, um, we, we more thought of it in the beginning of, okay, the marketing side of things, like our branding, the logo, the name, our colors, even sure. what would we do with all, what would we, we do with, um, with all of that first. Uh, but, you know, fortunately, um, you know, for us, my, my sister had a friend or has a friend who's a graphic designer. And where he was working, they built a lot of different kind of tech platforms and, and they, they built a lot of different prototypes. So it was, you know, he kind of told us, hey, reach out to this group. They can kind of help you. And so we had reached out to a, a prototype agency um, and they're based out of London, Ontario. And uh, from there, you know, we set up a meeting with these guys, not really knowing what to expect because it was the first time that we had ever kind of done something like this. Uh, but my sister and I came into this meeting very prepared. We knew what we wanted. We knew how we envisioned everything to look. And it was just, how can we relay our message and what we're looking for to these guys to a point where they'll understand what we want and I can build it out for us. Um, and so we, we met with this eight prototype agency. It was great. And they took our idea and made it exactly what we were looking for like they literally took like how i envisioned it in, in my mind is what they showed us and it was funny mm -hmm. you know, whenever i meet with you know, young tech founders or young uh, young people who want to eventually start something in the tech space i i never knew this early on but getting a prototype built first before actually building out the app was uh was something that saved us a lot of headaches, a lot of time and a lot of money, quite frankly, because, you know, it was a lot easier to make changes as a prototype than it would be to make a change with something that's actually built and de developed and live. Sure. And, you know, it's funny, like when, when the app started, even our website, um, there are so many changes that we've made that maybe you might not notice, uh, but, tons of subtle changes and updates that we've made to make sure that it's the best that it can be. So evolving the technology was, is something that we are constantly doing. 
And then once, once the prototype was built and it was in a space or in a spot that we felt we were really comfortable and happy with it, um, you know, from there, finding a developer was something where, again, how the heck are we going to find a developer to actually build this for us? Right. You know, there's so many different angles. There's so many different ideas being thrown your way. You know, oh, outsource it to India or outsource it to uh, California. And I remember um, looking at, at different uh, different eight or different developers that can do this type of thing and just being terrified of what I was seeing in terms of costs and things like that. Uh, but luckily for us, um, the agency that we had worked with knew a bunch of developers that they had worked with and trusted and they made, they were um, able to make introductions for us. And from there we had met with a few developers. Uh, we explained what we were looking for and, uh, once we found the developer that we were happy with and comfortable with, he's, you know, we went with him and he's, he's been a part of our team since day one. And, and one of the things that we were looking for was because our developer is contract, he's not a part, uh, he's not a founder or anything like that. Um, so he's free to go and do other projects, but his, I would say his biggest project is Swab. And we wanted somebody that whenever we had an idea if he didn't agree with it, or if he thought it could go another direction, we wanted that pushback. We wanted somebody to say, well, have you thought of doing it this way instead of this way? Right. And, you know, that's one thing with our developer is he is, um, first of all, he's fantastic because he's local. I know that if there's any issues, I'm able to get a hold of him right away. So that he mm -hmm. deals with a lot of that. Um, but he, you know, there, there's ideas that we've had that we talked about with him and he's pushed back. And so for us, it just gave us that peace of mind knowing that, this guy is as passionate about this as we are. And if he's putting his name on it, he wants it to be the best it can be just as much as we do. So that for us really gave us peace of mind. That's amazing. So, and, and obviously he's not free because right? he's not a founder. So you, you had to pay for him. What was that kind of savings that you had from your old jobs or did you do something along the side in order to pay for it? Or, or did you win a, a bunch of checks be, behind you <laughs> before, before that? So how, how does that come uh, to actually putting it in and making a true working app? Yeah. So bootstrapped, uh, <laughs> we kind of took advantage of the fact that, um, you know, we had some money saved between the two of us. And so that certainly helped out. Um, and then there was other, you know, tons of other things that we looked into for the help. So, you know, different government grants uh, we applied to, um, you know, we were always applying to different pitch competitions and trying to get involved that way, see if we can win some money that way. So uh, we were fortunate that, um, you know, between my sister and I, the different competitions that we had won, and the different government grants that were available, it was enough to help us get everything off the ground initially. Sure. And what would you say for those who um, are, are kind of in the, in the same boat where, um, and, and maybe they're, they're not the marketing types, they, they have the idea, because it seems like that works to your benefit, because that obviously helps with the, the pitching and the messaging and stuff of that. If they have uh, an idea, what would be kind of the, the first step uh, that, that, that you encourage them to, to undertake to, to following their dreams? Well, it, it, in terms of funding, um, you know, there there are so many different government grants or loans that are available to founders. Um, just, you know, the difficult part of that is there's a lot of research that needs to be done. Um, but there are lots of different things that that um, that you can do uh, to help kind of with the funding. And so for us, we made sure that we did all of the research and took advantage of anything that was out there, like, you know, it didn't matter if it was the smallest amount or something that was significant. It was, if, if it's free money in our pocket, we will explore it. We will, you know, do everything we have to, to make sure we get it. Um, so my advice, like in terms of how to get it started, because obviously it's going to, you know, starting a business takes time and money. Um, look at the resources that are available to you. It's, it, it's, it's very um, redundant. It's a lot of, it's very time consuming uh, and can be quite tedious, but you've got to put the time in and you'll, you'll start to see that there are things available to help you. 
That, that's amazing. So as we start to, to, to wrap things up, um, like I'd love for you to share some of your, your swike, the stuff I wish I knew earlier. So along the way, uh, I don't know if, it, if it's high school Alex or university Alex or college Alex or like somewhere in between. What, what sort of uh, advice would you want to share with yourself that you wish that you knew earlier in the process? Yeah, I, I think at the beginning, at the early stages of this, um, you know, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves because there was a lot of people that were supporting us and we, we didn't want to let these people down, especially, you know, our family, our parents who believed in us since day one. Um, you know, we felt a lot of pressure that we didn't want to let anybody down and we wanted to make sure that we were managing or, or, or meeting their expectations. So, you know, in the beginning when when we first started and uh, you know we wanted to be like right at the very top um and so whenever you know we would an employer would try us and didn't want to continue with us for whatever reason in the early stages it was one of those things where it was like well why why you know we built this out for you what could we do better and, and it was one of those things where we would get so frustrated and get so down on ourselves that looking back uh, you know i i would have just told myself to stay calm, keep doing what you're doing, get back on the horse because, you know, it's, it's, you know, ask any founder of any business or even in, you know, in any career path, it's not always just a smooth line. You know, there's bumps along the way and, and it's how you deal with those kind of bumpy roads. Um, you know, that's how, what will determine, you know, your success or not. And so I, 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 I wish going back or looking back that I would have told myself to just kind of, Keep doing your thing. Don't get too high when things are good. Don't get too low when things are bad. Because, you know, it, I think it's important to stay even, you know, whenever, you know, whether in, in work or as a founder or in anything, you know, when things are good, you, you know, you think you're on top of the world, but, mm -hmm. you know, it could come crashing down just as quickly. So, yeah, you know, that's one thing that, you know, especially now for myself, um, I always try to stay stay even keel and make sure that, you know, when there are those bumps along the road now, you know, how we deal with it is much different than how we dealt with it early on. But even with the good things that happen now, uh, you know, yeah, we're obviously happy and proud to see that this has evolved into something that's helping people across Canada and, and slowly now into the U.S. Um, but it's just, you know, keep doing your thing. Don't, don't stop what you're doing and just make sure that, uh, you know, you don't beat yourself up when things are bad and don't get too high when things are good. That's amazing. So what, what are kind of the next steps? So I think you and I met at a, probably at one of the conferences where you were boosting <laughs> and, and I thought it was an interesting idea and we, we stayed connected. Uh, and although you have aspirations for this to be like a billion dollar company, you're, you're not quite there yet, um, but you're, you're making headway, right? And, and, and at least there's progress. So, so what are some of the, the, the next steps you, you talked when, when we were on off camera, like uh, moving to the US and, and what are some of the other interesting things that we could look forward to if, if we're following along with Swab? Yeah, so like I said, for us, we always want to make sure that we're evolving and, and updating the technology to make sure it's uh, as, as strong as it can be. And for us, feedback is probably the most important thing. So for all of the different features that make Swab unique for employers posting jobs, um, all of those features came from us having conversations with different employers and different people in HR and just, you know, really learning and understanding, okay, what did you like? What didn't you like? What do you want to see? And so, you know, as, as important that, as that is to us on the employer side, it's equally as important on the job seeker side as well. We want to make sure that it's as easy and as convenient as possible. Um, so one thing that we've done um, you know, and, and this is something where we heard from our users, we got their feedback and we wanted to make sure that we, we listen. And so one thing, and you know, I guess, unfortunately, uh, with the pandemic happening and, and a lot of people who have, have unfortunately lost their jobs, um, some people, you know, young students, when we say the Tinder reference or when we say Tinder for jobs, they know how it works right away. Uh, so there's no issue there. But with, you know, more mature job seekers, um, they might not want an app on their phone. And I totally appreciate that. There's a lot of, I, I for one, you know, ironically enough, don't have a lot of apps on my phone. Um, so we built out on our website where now if you're a job seeker, like any other job board, you can go onto our website, 
look, type in what industry you're looking for and what location you're in, and it'll show you a list of jobs that are available in your area based on what you're looking for, and you can apply online. Um, and so that's one thing where you know, our users told us they want to see that, and we built that out for them. So that's something where you know, now if you don't want the app, you can visit our website and you can look for jobs there as well. So it's just another resource. Um, and then in terms of you know, next steps and what we're doing, uh, so right now, SWAB is available across Canada, uh, and it's something that we are obviously very proud of and, and happy that we've managed to get to a point where we are national. Uh, but now the next step is into the U.S., and so we've identified Dallas as an area that uh, we wanted to sort of test things out first. Um, so we're sort of in the early stages of that. Uh, like, and when I say early stages, I mean like, Literally within the last couple of weeks, it's something that we've launched and, and started to promote out in Dallas. Uh, and it's, you know, it's been one of those things where we're, we're really happy with, with the turnaround and the results that have been happening. Um, there has been some traction in that area. And so for us, the biggest thing is to continue to grow, uh, continue to make sure that we stay top of mind and, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, for us, our ultimate goal is if a job seeker is looking for a job and their first thought is to go to Swab, not Indeed or any of the other job sites, that for us is a win. And alternatively on the employer side, if an employer needs to hire and their first thought is to go on to Swab and post their job, their job that is a win for us. Um, so we, you know, we want to make sure that we continue to grow and that we can continue to support the people that we are working with and make sure we give them the best experience as possible. That's amazing. So yeah, look forward to hearing about all the other updates and would love to uh, have you back to talk about things like like resiliency uh, and, and even marketing, because I think a lot of those things are, are ones that uh, folks would be curious about uh, understanding from, from your journey on the entrepreneurial side and, and elsewhere. Um, but yeah, any uh, parting words for folks or, or where can folks uh, connect with you if they're wanting to uh, learn a little bit more about yourself or, or wanting to learn more about Swab? Yeah, for sure. I, if, if you want to connect, I'm, I'm always happy to have conversations and kind of share some of the experiences that I've, I've had along the way. Um, because, you know, in the early, in the early stages of SWAB, uh, when things do get kind of tough, it, we had such great support from other people that kind of helped us, you know, outside of our parents that helped keep us inspired. And so if I can give back and do a fraction of what these people did for me, like I'm always happy to offer up my time. So if people want to connect, send me an email. Um, you know, you can send it to alexander at swabapp.com or if you go onto our website, swabapp.com, you can reach out to our info email and one of us will be sure to respond and, you know, give our time and, and give us the best advice that we can. That's awesome. So, so thanks so much, Alex, for sharing your story and, and kind of the, some of the trials and tribulations and interesting turns that happened along the way. And uh, yeah, we'll look forward to hearing more about your progress. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. I, I really enjoyed doing this. And um, yeah, it was a pleasure. And, and thank you for having me on. Thanks for joining us on the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier, the podcast. If you like the podcast, please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you found this podcast. And if you can give us a review, that would be very appreciated. Feel free to contact me on LinkedIn at Luki Danu, L-U-K-I-D-A-N-U, and the same on most social media platforms. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Bye.